वेलकम टू वेलकम टू द कोर्स बिजनेस एनालिटिक्स एंड डेटा माइनिंग मॉडलिंग यूजिंग आर सो इन टी वी एस पी लेक्चर्स वी हैव बीन डिस्कसिंग लॉजिस्टिक रिगेशन सो लेट्स स्टार्ट अवर डिस्कसन फ्राम द सेम पॉइंट वेयर वी लेफ्ट इन प्रीवियस लेक्चर सो वी वर डूइंग एन एक्सरसाइज इन आर इन्वायरमेंट एंड वी कम्पलीटेड दैट एक्सरसाइज सो दैट वॉज यूजिंग प्रमोशनल ऑफर्स डेटा सेट सो वट वी आर गोइंग टू डू इन दिस पर्कुलर लेक्चर इज विल यूज एन आदर डेटा सेट एंड अदर प्रॉब्लम and we'll go through the complete analysis that is required in logistic regression so the da data set that we are going to use for this lectures uh, exercise is uh, on flight details so this uh, particular data set we have used uh, before as well so let's so this is the uh, data set flight details dot xlsx so this particular data set have been used before so let's uh, load this import this data set into our environment so we have uh, 100 data observation 13 variables however there are some na rows and na columns so let's uh, get rid of them so let's first remove na columns then na rows and you would see 107 observation 13 variables uh, let's look at the first six observations so this particular data set uh, we had uh, used before when we uh, discussed new base so now again we will understand so this uh, particular data set uh, the most of the variables that we have they are factor variable as you can see in first six observation we have flight number flight carrier uh, then date then source then uh, scheduled time of departure then we have actual time of departure then we have scheduled time of arrival then actual time of arri arrival then uh, uh, destination then we have day whether it was sunday or monday so we had uh, information on just two days data on just two days then flight status and then two uh, additional variables uh, so uh, when we uh, use this particular data set in uh, neo base technique we did not have these two variables uh, distance and flight time so we have added these uh, two variables uh, distance between the source and destination and also flight time so uh, uh, this particular data set so let's look at the structure and then we'll discuss further so uh, let's look at this information so flight number if we see that uh, uh, so flight number is something that we are going not going to use in this particular analysis however flight numbers for each of the uh, you know flights uh, that we have uh, with us right 97 of them out of 107 observations some of them must be repeating uh, so then we have flight carrier so we have three carriers uh, air india indigo and jet airways so we'll uh, discuss them then we have uh, date so a uh, date of flight Uh, so we have uh, flights on two days that is uh, 30th july 2017 and 31st july uh, 2017 however as we did in new base algorithm we would like uh, uh, we would not like to use this information and uh, date is not important for our analysis and we'll consider them uh, you know we will not consider date and we'll look at the time intervals of uh, the specific uh, time intervals departure intervals of flights so the uh, main uh, problem uh, remains same so this is a classification problem that we are going to model using logistic regression modeling so where we would like to uh, predict, predict the delays of flights right so other variables uh, we are familiar with a day and flight state or distance flight time so these are the other variables flight time as you can see this is right now it is factor so this has to be converted into a numeric variable uh, distance is okay flight status is also okay however we would like to change the labels you can see this is uh, delayed and on time however since we are modeling for delayed so we are trying to predict delays so therefore our reference category has to be on time and uh, uh, modeling has to be done with respect to delayed so we need to change these uh, labels for our outcome variable that is flight status so we would like to predict uh, the flight status whether particular flight is going to be on time or delayed uh, focus is on delayed so the, uh, on time is going to be our reference category 
just like we used to have uh, other techniques, other examples, just like we used to have one and zero. So a focus was on always class one, uh, members belonging to class one. So we always look to identify, uh, uh, build a model which would be classifying an observation into class one. So uh, here in this case, as I talked about, we need to, we will be required to change the labels. Destination is okay, day, uh, this also we would have to change. Uh, so day is a factor variable, two days, Sunday and Monday. So right now this is numeric variable. So we will be required to change uh, this variable as well. The scheduled uh, depart, uh, you know, uh, departure time, uh, uh, actual uh, time of departure and, and these four information uh, only we will uh, try to derive another variable using uh, these four information. So uh, flight status has been derived, already been derived using uh, some of these uh, variables and we will derive another variable that departure time interval using uh, some of these variables. Other, uh, after those derivation, after, after uh, those variable derivation, uh, we will not be using these variables. Source is appropriately mentioned, factor, three labels date we won't be using flight carrier we uh, we would be using appropriately mentioned flight number again we won't be using so uh, let's uh, start some of these transformation so before we go ahead uh, let's take a backup of uh, this particular data set so we'll take a backup and then uh, we would because as we said we are not interested in actual uh, dates of those flights so uh, we'll uh, like to change the same uh, because we need to do, uh, we need to use these uh, particular columns for certain variable derivations. So we will like to change these uh, uh, dates to, uh, so that it, it comes out to be the same date for all the flights and therefore various uh, derivation that we want to perform, there are no issues in, 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 in that. So now you can see uh, now in all these four dates, uh, they have, uh, the dates has been changed uh, earlier it was. Earlier it was uh, uh, 1899, so this particular aspect we have already discussed uh, during naval base why 1899 uh, this particular date was coming there. Now uh, this is what we require before we uh, go for further variable uh, transformation. So with this, so first six observation not much change only uh, these four variables have been changed, dates have been changed as you can see. Now let us uh, first variable transformation that we are going to perform is on departure time. So we would like to break departure time into appropriate intervals. Uh, so for example, uh, let us uh, look at the range now because now uh, actual time of departure now it is uh, you know we have excluded that uh, date information now uh, for all the observation we are using the same date. So therefore uh, range can be appropriately captured for our analysis. So we have uh, flights ranging from uh, flights ranging from 12:40 p.m. to uh, 20 hours, right? So 40 uh, zero zero uh, uh, hours, 40 minutes to uh, 20 hours, right? So uh, this is the range. Now we would like to uh, break uh, this time into appropriate intervals. So as uh, we have done during NEO base, we can see we would like to uh, break uh, this uh, departure time into four intervals. Uh, you can see the labels also 0 to 6, uh, 6 to 12, 12 to 18 and 18 to 24. So 24 hours time format, we would like to create four categories of that from 0 to 6 uh, and 6 to 12 and 12 to 18, 18 to 12. So for this, we would be requiring uh, this uh, a breaks variable which would be uh, used in the cut function as you can see in uh, next line of code this one uh, that breaks is, uh, breaks uh, uh, this particular variable is going to be used here and it will uh, cut the different observation uh, in, in actual time of departure using these breaks. So let us compute this. So we would see in environment section we will have breaks, uh, breaks uh, variable and 5 uh, values are there and uh, let us also create labels. So these uh, breaks can be used to create these four categories. So let us execute this. So you would see that uh, depth uh, this variable has been created with uh, it is a factor with four labels. 
right. So, we get it uh, this Perka variable into appropriate format. So, let us append this uh, Perka variable into uh, the data frame. Now, let us focus on another variable. So, we had noticed that day was also uh, you know day was we want it to be a factor variable categorical variable uh, having uh, Sundays and Mondays flights on two days. However, this was stored as numeric. Uh, so, let us uh, change it to factor. Let us look at the label 1 and 2. So, we would also would like to change these uh, label names uh, instead of 1 and 2 we would like to have Sunday and Monday specifically specified. Uh, so, we will do that. Once this is done we will focus on another variable that is flight time. So, uh, flight time that information we had in that uh, time notation at uh, hours colon minutes colon seconds. So, we would like to uh, change it into a format uh, that could be useful for our analysis. So, we would like to change them uh, all those uh, that this file flight duration uh, flight time uh, variable into minutes. So, all those values we would like to convert into minutes. So, this is the function that can be used as dot diff time. So, because uh, these are uh, you know time intervals, so they are differences between two times. So, this particular uh, function as dot diff time can be used and you would see that uh, we would be able to change it, it into minutes. So, first uh, you would see that uh, uh, this particular variable has been uh, changed to this. Let us look at the structure. So, if we go to FL time you see that class diff time has been created. So, this is now atomic vector and now all these values they are minutes right. So, you can see character uh, minutes here. Uh, this information. So, all these uh, values uh, that were there uh, time intervals now they have been converted into minutes. So, with this uh, uh, almost we are almost there. So, you can see that flight time now you can see 84 minutes, 94 minutes, 79 minutes. So, all the flight uh, time duration have been appropriately converted. Uh, we have created the departure variable uh, each of the flight uh, has been uh, correctly labeled as per its uh, newly created category in departure and uh, so let us focus on some other transformation. So, before that uh, let us take a backup. Now, as we have talked about that uh, some of these variables we would not be considering. So, for example, variable 1 that is flight number then a date that is uh, 3 uh, column number 3 we would not consider then from column number 5 to 8. Uh, so, these are the actual dates, uh, scheduled time of departure, actual time of departure, scheduled time of arrival and actual time of arrival. So, these also these four columns also we will not be uh, uh, taking into model. So, let us get rid of these variables, these columns. Now, so these are the variables that we are left with and also they are in appropriate format. So, we would like to use these variables in our logistic regression model. So, we now we have flight carrier, source, destination, day, flight status, our outcome variable. However, we need to change the labels as we talked about uh, distance uh, and we have flight time, minutes and then we have uh, this uh, departure interval. So, once uh, this is done and uh, these are first 6 observations. If we want to take uh, you know any uh, random sample of 20, so this is sample function can be used in this fashion. Uh, so, this uh, part of, uh, command will give us 20 randomly selected rows. So, we can have a look at uh, different uh, values for different observations, randomly drawn observations. Now, uh, let us focus on the outcome variable. So, outcome variable the labels are delayed and on time in that particular order. Now, we would like to change this into numeric code because later on the different uh, later on our code uh, would uh, be uh, much easier to write if we have uh, the numeric codes right because we would be creating lift curve and uh, cumulative lift curve where would be, we would uh, require a numeric code so that we can create the cumulative actual class. So, all those things uh, for all those things uh, we would prefer uh, this uh, label for uh, outcome variable to be 1 and 0. Uh, so, uh, let us change this. So, 1 here as you can see uh, 1 is corresponding to delayed and 0 is corresponding to on time because our uh, uh, task is uh, to predict uh, delayed flights right. So, uh, therefore, uh, 1 has to be assigned to delayed right. So, let us uh, 
execute this. Let us look at the uh, first six observation of this outcome variable write status you can see labels have changed now 1 to 0. However, if you see that ordering is 1 and 0, so uh, 1 would become reference category and uh, that means delayed would become reference category. So, we do not want that. So, we would like to change this. So, relabel uh, function uh, can be used uh, to perform this kind of change. You can see uh, in the relabel first you need you know, we need to pass on the factor variable and then uh, the second argument is uh, for the reference. Uh, so, we can select the reference category here, the other things would be appropriately uh, changed. So, uh, if we execute this code and look at the structure of this particular variable, now you can see 0 and 1 in the correct order and 1 representing now delayed and 0 representing on time flights. So, now uh, this particular variable, uh, let us look at first 6 observations also. Now, this particular variable is in the uh, desired, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, state uh, as we want it to be. Now, at this moment, uh, if we want certain uh, uh, analysis, descriptive analysis, we can do so uh, as we did in new base as well. We can, once this uh, data is ready uh, for logistic regression model, uh, all the um, key variables are there and the data frame, final data frame, then we can write this uh, particular uh, file into, into our disk and then we can apply, you know, uh, pivot table, Excel base pivot tables uh, to create some summary to uh, uh, for further analysis. So, let us, so I have already created one pivot table. So, let us open this. So, this was the data pivot table this particular exercise we have already done. So, uh, we have to just select the data and you know get it into appropriate uh, uh, presentable format and uh, then select all the uh, all the columns all the rows and then uh, create pivot table using the insert tab and within that, that this pivot table option and the pivot table would be ready for us in this fashion. So, I have already selected few of the uh, important uh, variables here in appropriate filters. So, you can see in row labels I have uh, in row uh, label I have SRC that is source, then in column label I have flight carrier those three uh, flight carrier that we have Air India, Indigo and Jet Airways and uh, three uh, source uh, uh, we have uh, that is BOM, uh, Dell and MAA that is uh, Mumbai, Delhi, Mumbai airport, Delhi airport and uh, Madras airport. And uh, then we have uh, in the values uh, area we have count of uh, flight status that means how many uh, flights are uh, actually delayed. So, how many flights are there count of flight. So, overall uh, now, however, uh, in the report filter, I have flight status and day as you can see here. So, these are uh, the report filters point. So, flight status you can see I have pre selected one. So, this can be changed. If we click on this filter, you can see all, all the flights, count of all the flights are uh, delayed flights, one representing uh, delayed. So, therefore, uh, delayed flights and zero representing on time. So, that can be done. In day also we have a filter. So, this is uh, since this is report filter. So, we are going to have a filter for all the variables. So, Sunday and Monday you can see here that uh, we can have all uh, uh, you know all days uh, Sundays and Mondays to uh, together total and then either Sunday or Monday. So, those numbers would be reflected. So, the these uh, this particular descriptive table will change depending on the uh, change in levels of uh, report filter variable. So, uh, let us look at uh, some of these numbers. So, as we can see uh, that uh, when uh, we are interested in finding the count of uh, delayed flights, you can see the flight status is selected as 1 right here in the filter flight status selected as 1. Therefore, uh, uh, the we are interested in uh, understanding the delayed flights uh, from, uh, from these descriptive statistics, summary statistics. So, uh, we can see that uh, then uh, further we have selected Monday. So, uh, delayed flights and then Monday. So, these are the numbers. So, we can see uh, when the source is uh, Mumbai airport that is BOM, then we can see total number of uh, delayed flights are 16 and you would see jet airways more number of flights of uh, jet, jet airways are uh, delayed. So, uh, in this table once you click uh, you will get the specific observations as well right. So, uh, now uh, if we look at uh, if we look at uh, 
uh, the second row we see that uh, uh, daily so overall total number of uh, delayed flights for Mumbai and airport both these airports. So, these airports uh, are uh, two busy airports in our country and uh, you can see number of delayed air flights are uh, similar number is there and Madras airport we have just seven delayed flights. However, uh, across three carriers we, uh, we see that uh, jet airways we have more number of uh, flights in terms of number we have no more number of delayed flights. So, uh, in terms of just the number right in terms of just the number and this information is for Monday. So, now what we can do is uh, because uh, uh, with respect to delayed flights let us look at the uh, what happens during Sundays. So, let us uh, select Sunday and we do. Uh, so, now you would see uh, during Sundays we do not have any uh, flight uh, in our data set originating from Madras airport. So, that is gone. So, that is also one problem in modeling exercise as I, I have talked about in previous uh, lectures as well that uh, if some of the combinations are not uh, covered then that could be a problem when we go about predicting new observation because if uh, that observation falls into that zone and, uh, and in our training partition that was not covered some of those combinations were not covered in our training partitions then prediction would not be possible. So, the same thing is reflected here the, for example, on Sunday we do not have the source uh, destination M, M, M uh, Madras we do not have any flights from that uh, source and uh, if we look at uh, the number of flights are quite few in comparison to uh, Monday. However, if we look at again uh, uh, more number of delayed flights are from uh, Mumbai and again more number of delayed flights are uh, from Jet Airways. So, uh, in terms of numbers uh, total number of flights are also uh, less and uh, uh, during Sundays and total number of uh, uh, therefore, total number of delayed flights are also less. So, if we uh, look uh, proportion wise then uh, there does not seem to be much difference uh, between Sunday and Monday. So, the same thing we should expect when we build our logistic regression model uh, the same uh, thing we should be expecting in our results as well that uh, there in uh, in terms of uh, you know if we look proportion wise uh, then there does not seem to be any difference uh, in delayed flights. Uh, you know whether it is Sunday or Monday. The similar kind of exercise can also be performed uh, for on time flights. So, we can go to flight status uh, report filter we can select uh, 0 and that would represent the on time flights. Now, uh, we can see the Sunday numbers here and uh, uh, Bombay 3 flights on time, Delhi 2 flights on time and the Madras 1 flight on time. So, we did have a flight on Sunday from Madras, but that was on time. So, uh, we can change the uh, day filter as well to uh, Monday to see uh, the difference. So, we expect more number of flights uh, during Monday. So, that is the case. So, we see that uh, a more number of uh, uh, flights uh, 15, uh, 22, 19. However, if we really look at these numbers during Mondays. Uh, we see that uh, there are more number of flights, uh, there are more number of uh, flights uh, from Indigo which seem to be on time. However, proportion wise our number of flights that they are running on Mondays are also uh, more or also higher. So, that could be the reason. So, this kind of analysis we can uh, do using pivot tables and that would uh, give us some insights uh, when we go into formal technique like logistic regression. Uh, what we should be expecting. So, this kind of analysis uh, can also help us in uh, grouping as we have been talking about in previous lecture grouping some of the categories from this we would be able to understand that uh, which uh, uh, source destination can be grouped or which days can be grouped here we just have two days. So, uh, therefore, uh, the question would be whether we should incorporate day at all if it is the if it does not seem to be a significant predictor for delayed flights. Uh, as, as per the descriptive stats that we saw. So, these kind of uh, decisions can be uh, uh, these kind of insights can be derived from descriptive stats. So, what we will do we will go back to our environment and we will move to our next step uh, that is uh, partitioning. So, uh, because this uh, particular data set is quite small just 107 observations 
and uh, for training uh, participants we would like to have more number of observations so that the model is slightly uh, more stable more number of uh, combinations because we are using uh, fact uh, many uh, many there are uh, you know majority of the predictors that we have they are factor they are categorical so there uh, you know there are going to be more uh, combinations of values that we would like to cover in our model so more observation we would like to have in the training partition because of this is small sample size so let's do this partition uh, partitioning 90% uh, for training partition and the remaining 10% for testing you can see our partitions are created 96 observation in the training partition and 11 observe remaining 11 observations in test partition now as we did in previous uh, lecture the same function glm can be used flight status is our outcome variable other variables are going to be uh, uh, going to be used as predictors uh, other things remain same so let's uh, run this code we get the model let's look at the summary so if we look at the results of uh, this uh, uh, logistic regression model that we have just uh, uh, created uh, we can see the results uh, most of the variables because of the smaller data size we don't see much significance However, we do see uh, three variables uh, to be significant at 90 percent confidence interval. You can see a small dot here that is uh, for 90 percent confidence interval. Uh, so, the three variables seem to be significant. First one is uh, flight carrier indigo. So, uh, the uh, so the estimate is negative. So, this seems to be significant at 90 percent confidence interval and uh, so therefore what we can understand is uh, with reference to indigo uh, with reference to air india which is the reference category for flight carrier uh, indigo uh, flights from indigo flights from indigo carrier uh, they uh, seem to be uh, less delayed because remember this particular modeling exercise is with respect to delayed flights so therefore if the coefficient is negative so therefore we should expect uh, that uh, 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 logit values uh, are going to be uh, that uh, logit value there is going to be less uh, there is going to be decrease and therefore there is decrease in probabilities value and therefore uh, there is more chance for it to be on time rather than delayed. So uh, in this fashion we can interpret however the uh, when we interpret these results we should also look at uh, first whether the variable is significant. Uh, so, we have to check the as per our accepted level of uh, confidence interval, we can look at the significance and once the variables are uh, significant, then we can look at their coefficient values to understand the level of impact that they have. So, uh, flight uh, from indigo, they seem to be uh, less delayed or more on time uh, in comparison to Air India. right? Uh, the same cannot be said about jet airways because this is insignificant relationship. Now, other uh, other very other uh, uh, significant coefficient is source uh, that is from Madras airport. So, it seems uh, that uh, flights which originate uh, from uh, Madras airport they also seem to be uh, you know uh, less delayed, right? So, more on time. So, this is also again at 90 percent confidence interval. Similarly, we have another uh, significant variable that is destination Hyderabad. So, this is a dummy code for Hyderabad. So, uh, airport. So, we can see here also that the flights uh, which uh, arrive at Hyderabad, so where the destination is Hyderabad, they seem to be uh, uh, less delayed or more on time with respect to our. Uh, reference category. Same is also that Madras airport was also uh, with respect to the reference category. Now, uh, other variables uh, we can see they do not seem to be significant for example, day Monday. So, as we uh, saw in our pivot table uh, that uh, proportion wise there did not seem to be much difference uh, on, in, uh, on flights during Mondays or Sundays. So, uh, this also in the results also registration model results also. Uh, this particular variable dummy variable does not uh, come out to be significant. Uh, so, we can see that what we expected from our pivot table uh, exercise is the same thing is reflected here in the model. Uh, distance uh, this also is uh, highly insignificant. So, distance is not a, a key uh, predictor here. 
so this can also be uh, so from this we can also understand which variable can be dropped and another modeling could be done for example distance is highly insignificant so probably this variable can be dropped however as uh, i have uh, pointed out in earlier lectures also in data mining modeling our goal is prediction so we are not uh, even if a particular predictor is insignificant but it is uh, of practical importance in terms of predicting task you know prediction or classification task or other data mining task we would still like to keep it in the model however uh, in this case distance uh, doesn't seem to be of much practical importance and highly insignificant so probably this can be dropped flight time we can see that it was uh, you know uh, an, an quite close to being significant at 90% confidence interval so probably uh, flight time is also uh, quite uh, practical in, in terms of uh, uh, predicting delayed flights so this uh, we should anyway keep there and the and the then is next one is departure time interval so uh, uh, with respect to the reference category that is 0 to 6 and these three departure interval they, they don't seem to be significant so probably uh, the, the departure time intervals also uh, don't matter uh, with respect to the data set that we have so what we can do we can uh, uh, look at uh, the uh, uh, another modeling approach so from this model uh, we can further understand uh, uh, which variables are important which variable are insignificant and if they are significant uh, what is the impact that they have and uh, whether another model with the only the important uh, variables can be done even if uh, a particular variable is insignificant as we talked about it can still be kept in the model if it is it provides some practical importance so uh, with this uh, we'll stop here and we'll continue our discussion on uh, this particular modeling exercise on flight delays thank you Music